Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. Now that we've got our override orb throwing well, we've got logic controlling how many times we can throw it, and our scene is mostly set up, the question becomes, how does the user know what's going on? And what do we want to do if they capture or fail to capture the droid with their allotted number of attempts? Part of that is going to get answered in this video. We're going to go ahead and set up our UI for the capture scene. And when we're done, this is going to be looking pretty nice. To start, let's go ahead and import a couple of assets we're going to need. Let's go to the GUI folder in our Project Explorer. And if you don't have these already, then go ahead and drag them in. We're going to need the Fail Badge, the Success Badge, and the override orb count badge. And we're just going to drag them from the explorer here into this folder. Perfect. Now I'm going to click and control click on all three of those that we just imported. And I'm going to set the alpha to transparent and change their texture type to sprite 2D and UI. And then I'm going to hit apply down at the bottom. Cool. Now we can use them the way they're intended to be used. The idea here is we're going to create one root UI canvas to manage everything. So let's shrink this window down a bit and zoom in so that we can see it when we add it. And I'm going to right click in the project hierarchy and add UI canvas. And that should add a canvas and an event system. And I'm going to rename this canvas UI root. And then I want to right click the UI root and create an empty game object. This game object is going to represent our fail screen. So let's name it fail screen, just like that. And we're going to end up with two other screens, but let's get this one under control first. Before I go any farther, we're going to make sure that our UI root has a canvas scalar script, and we're going to change this value from in the UI scale mode from constant pixel size to scale with screen size. What this is going to do for us is it's going to make it so our assets scale up and down depending on the device they're on, which is going to make it look the same across all devices. I'm not going to go too much into how the how all of this works. It's kind of outside the scope of this project, but just follow along if you don't know what's going on. We need to change the reference resolution. We're going to leave X alone at 800, and we're going to change the Y to 1280. This is in line with our current preview mode, which is 16 to 10 ratio portrait. And since that's what we're referencing, that's the resolution we want to reference. Then we're going to make sure that the screen match mode is set to match width or height. And we're going to change this value from 0 to 0 0.5, so it considers both equally. Let me actually expand this window to make sure that you can see it well. And other than that, we're done setting that up. Cool. Now let's go to our fail screen. We're going to click on the anchor. And we're going to change this anchor to stretch. And we're going to change all the values to 0. So left 0, top 0 position Z zero, right zero, bottom zero. Now it should fill the entire screen. Let's scroll out a bit so we can see and make sure that's happening. Our next move is to right click on this fail screen game object and create a UI object. So go down to UI and we're gonna select panel. And this panel should stretch across the entirety of this game object. So all of these positions should be at zero and the anchor should be set to stretch. Then we want to update this color, because the white isn't really going to work for what I have in mind. So let's change the color by left-clicking on that. And we're going to change it down here in the hex. And I want to use the red that we have for this same fail badge asset. We're just going to make it way more transparent and bring down the alpha. The hex is going to be E9005A. And then we're going to add 4B. 
and that should bring the transparency to the alpha level down to 75. Cool, making progress. Next, we're going to right click on the fail screen again. We're going to go down to UI and we're going to add an image. And we want to drag this fail badge onto the source image field under image script. And we're going to click preserve aspect and then click set native size. Awesome. That's already looking pretty good. I just want to bring up the size just a touch. So let's press R to activate scale mode. And I'm going to bring this up to about maybe there-ish. So let's change the scale on the X, Y, and Z axes to 1.16 all across the board. I'm going to bring this down a hair so it's just above our bot. Perfect. And then we want to give this guy some custom anchors. So I'm going to zoom in so I can see really well. And I want to anchor this to the sides. So the left side and make it match the current height of our tag. So about there. Then we're going to drag that to the right side. So the anchor should be set to the left and right size sides and be the size from top to bottom of this badge. And the reason we want to do that is to make sure that it looks good across the board. So let's check a couple different resolutions. Let's do 320 by 480 and 480 by 800, 3 by 2, and 16 by 10. Perfect. So they've all got at least the gap going on there. It's about the right size. Looks great. And I'm just going to rename these. So we're going to rename the panel to BG. And I'm going to rename the image to badge. Cool. With that, our fail screen is done. So let's left click it. And I'm going to copy it with Control C or Command C if you're on a Mac. And then just Control or Command V. And I'm going to rename the result, the fail screen one, to success screen. And just to make sure that I'm looking at everything the way it should be, I'm going to disable the fail screen from the object inspector. And then we just need to do a couple of things to update the success screen to look how it should. We're just going to go visit the BG or background under success screen. So let's left click that and then we're going to left click the color. And I just want to update this entire field to the green that we use for our success badge is going to be 00 BFIA. Now 255 is obviously really intense. And at this point, even the 75, that's, that's a little too much. So I'm going to drop the alpha down by about 30 points, 45. And that looks better. That's less intense. It still gives the green effect. And it'll look a lot better here when we update our badge in just a second. But that's, that's a good place for that to be. So close the color. And then we're going to click on the success screens badge. And we're going to update this source image from fail badge to success badge. Perfect. And now our success screen is done as well. Let's go ahead and disable that in the object inspector by clicking this checkbox next to the name. And we're going to right click on the UI root and we're going to add one more game object. And I'm going to name this game object gameplay GUI. And we're going to update the anchor so that it's stretched. And we're going to say 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So it should cover the entire thing the same way the fail and success screens did. And then I want to right click on the gameplay GUI. And I'm going to create a UI object of image. And we're going to take the override orb count badge and we're going to drag it into the source image field on that. And we're going to say preserve aspect, set native size. 
And we're going to drag this up into the top left corner-ish. So about there. And I want this to be just a hair bigger. So I'm going to set it to scale mode and find a good spot. About there-ish. So let's change each of the scale options for X, Y, and Z to 1.35, 1.35, 1.35. Cool. That looks great. We maybe want to bring it down and to the right just a little bit more there. Okay. About there is good. So I've currently got it at position negative 94, position Y 465, with a width of 378 and height of 154. Our next step is to add some anchors to this. And we're actually going to add these to a special spot. Rather than covering this like we did with the other image, we want a really special effect here. If we just did this, it would scale, but it would move left and right a little bit because it's drawn towards the right side. Right side. So what we'll do instead is we're going to set the anchor to the top left corner and expand it just until it touches the sides of this badge. And now it should be anchored to this spot in relation to the screen. So it should always stay right about here. Let's check that out. HVGA portrait 320 by 480, 480 by 800, 480 by 854, 800 by 1280, 3 by 2 landscape, 3 by 2 portrait, and back to our origin of 10 by 16. Perfect. It's really looking good. Let me zoom in so you can see this a little better. Cool, right? Now we want to write, we're going to rename this image for starters, and we're going to call this override orb counter badge. And then I'm going to right click on the override orb counter badge image, and I'm going to add some text. So go down to UI and then select text. And we're going to change the font under character from Arial to our digital font that we've been using. And we're going to anchor it to the left for alignment and to the bottom. Next, we want to go ahead and change the font size to best fit. And we're going to give it values of 18 and start with about 160. See where that puts us. Next, we're going to update the color, and we just want to set this to true white. And we're going to update the text to just be a 1. And then I'm going to set the height of the text to about 170. And then we're going to scoot this over to the side so that it sits just about there with a little bit of space next to this times mark. And for now, we're going to leave that anchored to the center of this image. Let's drag this up just a hair, just so the one lines up with the bottom of this X. Now let's check other screen sizes just to make sure that we're good. Looks pretty good to me. And with that, our UI should be done. So let's press play and see what happens and how this looks with the gameplay GUI active. Cool. Let's see if I can hit my own droid. Nope, apparently I'm bad at this game. So let's stop running before I embarrass myself some more. And we're going to go ahead and call this video good. So let's save. And next, we're going to need to set up something to control all of these UIs and tell the game which one should be active at what time in this scene. So before moving on to the next video, give that a little bit of thought and think how we might implement that. And I'll show you how we're going to do it together 
in the next video. Great job following along. Your UI is looking really good so far. So let's keep it going. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.